Malaysia has unveiled the country's first ever AI processor known as Mars 1000 by a local company called Skypechip. This marks a major turning point because for decades, Malaysia has been seen as a back-end supporter for semiconductors which is good at packaging and testing chips, but never at designing them. So why does it matter? Because design is where the power lies. A country that controls chips designs does not make just money, they control the future of AI, automation, and even military systems. This move raises an important question for Malaysia. Can Malaysia transform itself from a supporting players into a real force in global semiconductors? Malaysia's semiconductor story began in 1970s, when Intel, AMD, and other American giants set up operations in Penang. They came for low cost, political stabilities, and strong trade links. Penang became a Silicon Valley of the East, but mostly for back ends, assembly, packaging, and testing. Just to clarify, the front end means that the chip designs and wafer fabrication, and this is where a real IP and profits are. Back end refers to packaging and testing, and making sure that chips work and can be shipped. Malaysia dominated back end. Even today, Malaysia handles around 13% of global semiconductor packaging. That's huge, but the problem is value capture. Design can be up to 50% of the chip value, while packaging is often earned less than 10%. Malaysia was locked into a lower value rule. Places like Taiwan and South Korea moved up the ladder, first building fabs, then mastering designs, and now leading the world. Malaysia stays as a reliable partner, but not a leader. So what exactly is Mars 1000? It is an AI inference processor. AI workloads, they are usually split into training and inference. Training is where a model learns use massive dataset and powerful GPUs like NVIDIA H100. This requires top-end chips and often 5 nanometers and below, and huge data centers. Inference is where a trained model runs in the real world, recognizing faces in camera, interpreting speech on your phone, and controlling a robot. So the Mars 1000 is built for inference. That makes it more practical for industries like smart city, healthcare, and autonomous vehicles. Skychip designed Mars 1000 as a fabulous company, meaning they don't own fabrication plants. The chips will be like to be manufactured in Taiwan or South Korea, where advanced fabs already exist. But here's where a critical point is. The design IP belongs to Malaysia. This is where the shift happens. Owning design means Malaysia can start to move up the value chain, capture more profits, and build an ecosystem around AI processor. Even if it is not competing head-to-head -head with NVIDIA yet, the fact is that Malaysia now has a seat. In the current world geopolitical race, it is important to achieve independence in critical technologies to secure Malaysia's position. So let's talk about Bua Ken Singh, a Malaysian entrepreneur who invented the USB flash drive and built Fison Electronics in Taiwan. Recently, he announced plans to invest in Malaysia's semiconductor sectors. Why does this matter? Because semiconductors are not a solo game. They are ecosystems. Taiwan rise wasn't just about TSMC. It was about university, engineers, suppliers, venture capitals, and government all aligning. Malaysia has the foundation. Intel, Infineon, Micron, and AAC already operate major facilities here. Talent exists, but many top engineers move abroad. So what is missing is ecosystem glue, advanced design houses, and R&D cooperation, and of course capital. Poor return signals that Malaysia could begin stitching to this ecosystem together. If Skychip, Fison, and other local companies can grow together, Malaysia could finally move into a front-end game. Now let's compare Malaysia with its neighbor, Singapore. Singapore is a financial R&D hub. It doesn't have a fabs like Taiwan, but it attracts headquarters, R&D lab, and high-value chip design centers from companies like AMD and MediaTek. Singapore focuses on brain power capital and less on mass manufacturing. For Vietnam, Vietnam is fast, becoming a new electronic hub, especially for consumer electronics. Like some US firms have set up chip design training programs, but Vietnam is still more dependent on foreign firms than Malaysia. Indonesia is pushing for semiconductor cell sufficiency, but its focus is still on raw materials like nickel and batteries. More than chips, it is years behind Malaysia in semiconductors. So let's back to Malaysia. Malaysia is strong in packaging and testing, with decades of experience and infrastructure. Now moving into design like Mars 1000, plus potential ecosystem growth if investment follow. Malaysia sits in a sweet spot, stronger manufacturing base than Singapore, more mature than Vietnam, and more diversified than Indonesia. If it can push into design successfully, Malaysia can become a Southeast Asia semiconductor leader. If everything goes well, here is where things get geopolitical. Semiconductors are new oil. The US-China tech rivalry has shown that advanced ships aren't just about economics. They are about military powers, AI dominance, and control of the future. Malaysia is in a unique position 
and it is seen as a neutral country, not directly tied to the US-China rivalry. Both US and Chinese firms has already invested in Malaysia. Intel has massive operation in Penang, while Chinese firms source packaging from Malaysia. Supply chain diversifications after COVID and US-China tensions means companies want a stable middle ground hub. Malaysia fits the bill, but neutrality comes with challenges. The US will want Malaysia aligned with Chip4 Alliance partner, while China may call Malaysia as an alternative China. Playing both sides will require smart diplomacy. So what about the risk? If Malaysia doesn't build a real capability, it will remain as a passive partners or players, courted by both sides but never shaping the game. Malaysia faces big hurdles, first talent pipeline, engineer train, in chip designs are still limited. Malaysia must upgrade university and retain top minds. Second, capital intensity. AI chip development is expensive and a single tap out can cost tens of millions. Sustained funding is very important and critical. Third, ecosystem gaps. From EDS software tools to IP libraries, Malaysia still depends on global players. Building local capability will take time. Fourth, the competition. Neighbors are moving fast. Vietnam is training chips designed aggressively, while Singapore continues to dominate in R&D. But the opportunity is real. Malaysia can leverage its neutral diplomacy, existing manufacturing base, and new design breakthroughs to cave out a unique role. If it succeeds, Malaysia will not be just half a packaging chips, but it could become an AI leader. Malaysia's first AI chip, Mars 1000, is more than just a piece of silicon. It could be a signal that Malaysia wants to move up the ladder from a supporter to an innovator. The journey can be very long with challenges with talent, funding, and global competition. But with pioneers like Skychip and retain champions like Bokken Singh and even other local players, and of course, the government AI vision to transform Malaysia, Malaysia finally has a chance to reshape its place in the global semiconductor map. The geopolitical impact could be huge, not just for Malaysia, but for South Asia role in global tech race. So thank you for watching and what do you think about this? Please leave your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And see you in the coming videos. Bye bye.